Jesus Christ had to pay the penalty so we can he can make us righteous but that's, uh, I hope you understand that that concept so far because you know many times many times we we cheapen God's grace we throw the word we throw the word to the Lord we throw all this stuff to the curb we throw his 10 commandments to the curb because his commandments make it very clear the wages of sin is death so somebody has to die in order to make you righteous but let's look at some stuff here. I just want you to catch, put that in your mind that, that the, what we're dealing with in this court system is not, this is, not, this is some serious stuff because as a matter of fact, God's court system ain't like man's court system. God's court system, and we studied before, is just. The judge is just. He's going to have the right judgment. He's going to base it on truth. God doesn't just say, well, you know, I know you're guilty, but you just go ahead and go. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. Matter of fact, let's look at this. Are cases in heaven being decided right now? Are cases in heaven being decided as we speak? Let's go to the Bible and look at some things at the Bible. Let's go to Revelation 14, 6 through 7. Let me ask you a question. If you knew that your case is right before the judgment seat of God, what would your behavior be like? If you actually knew, right, you're, you are literally, your case has come up before the throne of God, what would you be acting like? We'll be serious. Let's go to Revelation 14, 6 through 7. Revelation 14, 6 through 7. You there? I want you to see this. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a what? Loud voice, fear God. And give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is what? Is come. And worship him that made the heaven, the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. So the, this text is making it very clear. And this is at the end of Revelation. This is where God is giving the prophecy to John in vision. And the Lord is making it clear that this messenger, which is God's people, giving his last day's message, the angel, angel means messenger, giving his last day message and saying, the judgment of God is here. God is judging people. Even as we speak right now. Like, okay, Carrie, let me show you. Give me some more evidence of that. Give me some more evidence. You got to give me some Bible. Give me some more Bible. Well, let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.10. Because don't you know there are many people in a grave that's already, the judgment has already been sealed. First, 2 Corinthians 5.10. I got to get out of my own righteousness here. It's making me hot. All right, Reverend 2 Corinthians 5.10. And it says what? It says, for we must, only the, only the poor people, only the rich people appear before the judgment seat. What does it say? All. all. We must all appear before the judgment seat of God. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that, to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Let's go to Hebrews 9.27. Hebrews 9.27. Hebrews. That's right close to James. Hebrews, James. Hebrews 9.27. Hebrews 9.27. And it says, As it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the what? Judgment. So everyone that dies, they're going to be judged. They're going to be judged. Their fate is sealed. There's no more. You can't pray for them. You can pray for their family. But once they die, the judgment is already rendered to be righteous or unrighteous. Okay? Now let's go to 1 Peter 4, 17. Now remember, I'm going to build the case here and build the case. 1 Peter 4, 17. 1 Peter 4, 17. Let's see. 1 Peter 4.17. Did everybody have it? I want, you to, I want you to see this here. I want you to see it. For the time has come that judgment must begin where? At the house of God. Don't you know judgment begins in the house of God. And then he continues on and says... What shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? 
Well, let me read it again. For the time has come when judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first began at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? You know, a lot of people don't like to talk about the judgment. You have mercy. We like talking about mercy. But we got to talk about the judgment. But the thing is, we as Christians should not be afraid of the judgment because God has given us provision to actually go before the judge. He's given us the provision and of course through Jesus Christ. Now, in the courts of heaven, can you make yourself righteous? Can I make myself righteous? Okay, yeah. I'm going to the court of heaven. Where are you going, man? I'm going to the court of heaven. How do I look? Man, you look horrible. I don't think so. I think I look pretty good. Can you make yourself righteous? That is the question. Is it, is it possible? Romans 10.3. Let's look at that. Romans 10.3. See what the Bible says. Acts Romans. Your, t your fingers tired yet? <laughs> Romans 10.3. All right, we just, all right, Romans 10, 3. Romans 10, 3, just hang on, hang on a little longer. Just a little, Romans 10, 3. And it says, for they bring, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted, submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So in other words, they're not, they're, you know, they're not, they don't understand the righteousness of God. They just bring it on their own righteousness. They're bringing it on themselves. Like, hey, my righteousness is all right. I don't, I don't need God's righteousness. Ignorance. Ignorance. Isaiah 57, 12. Can you make yourself righteous? Can you do it? See, I want you to understand something here. Understand something clearly. Now, when we look at the courts of the land, we look at the law of the land, you can make yourself righteous. Do you know that? When you look at our land, I can be a righteous citizen, a law-abiding citizen, and I can make myself do that. Right? But we've seen so far, you cannot make yourself righteous in the court of heaven. Totally impossible, because let's look at some more text here. Totally impossible. Here on earth, yes. In heaven's courts, no. Because let's look at Isaiah 57, verse 12. It says, I declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall, pro they shall what? Not profit thee. Your righteousness, your works, what you do. Yes, yeah, I know you're a good law-abiding citizen on earth, but in heaven you're corrupt, you're corrupt, you're nasty, you're dirty. Even though you're a good person here on earth. God's revealing something to us and our total need for him. Let's go to Isaiah 64, and I think this makes it out clear. It makes it very clear our true condition. It's only a verse, a couple of chapters over. Isaiah 64, verse 6, and it says, But we, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as what? Filthy, dirty, stinking, old diaper, spoiled milk, filthy, nasty rags. He said, you look like this. But Lord, I look like, what? I thought I'm fine. No, you look like this. Look at you. Look at you. You're dirty. You're stinking. But I'm doing everything I can do, Lord. I'm a good person, Lord. A good person, it's not good enough. Let's look at Luke 16, 15. Luke 16, 15. Let's let the Bible do the talking. Luke 16, 15. My deodorant's failing me now. <laughs> 16, 15. All right. And he said unto them, ye are, and he said unto them, ye are they which justify yourselves before men. In other words, justify means righteous. But God knoweth your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is what? Is what? An abomination. In the sight of God. 
I don't care what your education is like. God don't even care about how much education we have. God does not care how, how, what kind of wardrobe we have. God does not care what kind of drive car we're driving. God does not care what kind of house or neighborhood we live in. God says, that does not make you righteous. God does not care how much you go to church. God does not care about all your, your fasting and praying. God does not say all that, that may be good. But you're still filthy and nasty. Why? Because you still don't have on the righteousness of Christ. You're still in the course of heaven. You're not going to make it. See, the thing we have to understand, we have to understand our true condition and really realize that we cannot make it on our own. You have to be righteous. Why can I not make myself righteous like I can with human laws? Why can I do it? It seems like I, it should be easy. It should be, why can't I just do it on my own? All right, Romans 3.23. We should know that by heart now. Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23. You know, one of our goals is by the time in a few years go by, you have to get a new Bible because you just wore it out. <laughs> or you got to tape it like mine, you see? See how mine's all taped up? <laughs> Got to tape it up because you've been flipping from text to text, wearing out the Bible, wearing it out. Romans 3.23, what's it say? For what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are a sinner. And if you don't recognize that first, that you are a sinner, you cannot become righteous. So all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Let's go to Psalms 51.5. Psalms 51.5. And this is what David says. It says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You are born into sin and shaped in iniquity. You come out sinful. When you're a baby, when you're learning how to play with others, and I know, I know uh, Kim can attest to this, that she has a daycare. Do you have to teach a child how to take something from another child? You, you know, they just go in there and take it. You don't teach them that. They just take it because they feel they have, that's, that's in them already. And you have to train them to actually share. That's innate. That's in us. We're selfish people. Jeremiah 13, 23. Jeremiah 13, 23. Isaiah, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 13, verse 23. Let's see what it says. See what it says. Some of you are probably there before I am. All right, here we go. It says this, 20 verse 23. It says, can an Ethiopian change his spots? Or can an Ethiopian change his skin? Or leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are custom in doing evil. In other words, how can you be accustomed in doing good? You, you just evil. In your, in, you, you're sinful. Can I change my skin color? I'm an African American. I, I can do. I can bleach. I can do everything I can, but I'm, I can't change it. Can a, can a leopard change his spots? Totally impossible. So how can a sinner change his condition? I know. In other words, how can I get out of this stuff? I can try it myself. I can't get out of it. How can I get out of this stuff? More Bible text. I think y'all getting the point. But let's go to First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Whew. Even I'm getting tired of flipping from text to text. 1 Corinthians uh, 2.14. It's just a lot of stuff here. I mean, is the Bible speaking? Is the Bible speaking? All right. Understand this. I just had to get this. I, it says this. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Naturally, in your sinful flesh, you cannot really understand the righteousness of God. You don't get it. Let's go to Romans. Romans 8, after the book of Acts. Romans, at, Romans 8, 7 and 8. Romans 8, 7 and 8. Romans 8, 7 and 8. Let's, and it says this. Because a carnal mind, this carnal mind is a sinful mind, is what? Enmity against God, for it is subject, 
for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in flesh cannot please God. All right, do we understand? Now we got it now. In our flesh, we cannot please God. In our sinful nature, it's totally impossible to please God. I don't care how hard you try, how good a person you do. I don't care how many pilgrimages you make to Mecca or pilgrimages you make to Vatican or pilgrimages and, 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 and fasting days and all these different things. It still doesn't make you righteous. Even coming to church don't make you righteous. We can be doing all these things. We can't do it. Now, why is a sinful, carnal, why is a carnal, sinful state not subject to the law? The Bible makes it very clear. It's just the next, next text, the, going back to Romans chapter 7, is very clear. It says this. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. The reason why we're not subject to the law, because it's a spiritual, God's law is spiritual. But I am carnal. So, in other words, they're not going to meet up together. See, remember, the laws of the land here are carnal laws. The laws up in, in heaven are spiritual laws. And you, as a human being who, are, who is carnal, who is in your flesh, it's totally impossible, totally impossible for you to keep the spiritual law of God. Okay, we, we understand that. But you are still called to go before the judgment seat of Christ. You are still invited to the wedding. So in other words, if I'm invited or if I must go before the judgment seat of Christ, I must make sure I have the right garb on if I want to be seen as not guilty. Now, how do we stand before God in our sinful condition? Romans 3, we're still in the book of Romans. We may be there for a little bit. Let's go to Romans 3, verse 19. Romans 3, verse 19. But now... The righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and prophets. What verse, is that again? verse 19. I read the wrong one. Verse 19. <laughs> that give you a chance to get there. Are you there yet? All right, now let's look at verse 19. <laughs> and I read the wrong one. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, who are what? Who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and that all the world may become guilty before God. I want you to catch that because it's used the word being under the law. So when you are under the law, you are guilty. All right. As a sinner, you are guilty. Now, say, for instance, if I've broken the law, I've stolen something. I am, if I go to Walmart, take some stuff, I am now under the law because I, I should receive the penalty of the law. And the Bible making it clear, because we are all sinners, we are all under the law, we should receive the penalty of the law. So we all stand guilty before God. All of us. We're guilty. And we already know what the Bible says is, when you are under the law, you are condemned to what? Death. The wages, Romans 6, 23 says, the wages of sin is death. Death. And if you're breaking one of my commandments, you're breaking them all. And what, what reveals sin in your life? The commandments. So in other words, the commandments are like a mirror right here. I have a mirror, and then I go and look at the mirror, and I say, oh, man, I'm not ready. I am all messed up. I am not ready. When you have broken the law, you are under the penalty of the law and condemned to death. It will crush you. You see this boulder here? Just imagine. Just imagine. The boulder represents the law, and you are under the boulder. The boulder's on top of you. You're like, oh, uh, look, uh, can you get out of it? What can you do? Can you, I don't care how much strength you have. Uh, you can't move anywhere because you are under the law. The boulder's on top of you. It's nothing you can do. You, are, you, you should receive the penalty of that. You're going to die being under the law. Now, how can you be made righteous or not guilty? In other words, how can you get from under the law and actually seen as being not guilty? Now, this is it. Now, I'm going to give you the conclusion of the whole matter of righteousness by faith. Of how, how. Let's go to Romans 5. 5.17. And this is it. This is sweet right here. 
Because we're going to be moving from sinner to unrighteousness to righteousness. We're going to move from being guilty to be not guilty. Now, how can even the court of set law law in our court system today, if you're caught stealing, is it, is, it, is it possible for you to move from guilty to not guilty? It's impossible. Because you're guilty, you did it. But in the court of heaven, God has a, uh, made a plan for us so we can move from guilty. Literally, we've done the crime. We got caught. We should deserve death. But God has created a system and says, you know, I know you're guilty, but I have a way to make you not guilty. I have a way to make you not guilty. And this is it. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. And it says this. For if one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness shall reign in, in life by one, Jesus Christ. In other words, yes, Adam sinned, and sin came unto this earth. But God has created this gift. He created this system. Even though you have sinned, even though you're guilty, he sent somebody named Jesus Christ who has righteousness, who is righteous, is willing to make, you un to, is willing to make your righteousness, your unrighteousness, now righteous. Therefore, as by the offense of one Judgment came upon all man to condemn, to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. The free gift. So this righteousness that Christ will give you, if you're willing to take it, it is a gift. Because remember, you are guilty. And he is willing to take away your guilt. Now verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Oh this is awesome. So how do I get this righteousness Lord? I want this righteousness. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5 21. I hope you're understanding this now. I hope, you, I hope it's making some sense to you because you are in the court of heaven. You can't do it in yourself, your own strength. 2 Corinthians 5 21. For ye have made him to be sin. Remember, unrighteousness is just basically sin. For he hath made him to be sin for who? For us. Talking about Jesus himself. Who knew no sin that we might be made what? Righteous in God in him. Romans 3. We're in Romans still. Let's go back to Romans. Romans 3. Romans 3. Let's go back to Romans. Romans 3. Verse 19. Starting with verse 19. I'm going to go through 27. Just follow along and let's let the Bible teach us here. Okay. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is said to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophet even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference. So what we've seen so far, how do you receive the righteousness of God? Now you, have, you know you got to go before the court system. You know that you are guilty. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt, no guilty person here on earth will be, should be just let go. You shouldn't be let go. So in other words, you're about to go into this courtroom all guilty. But God has set up a system to make you righteous. And the only way to get this righteousness is have faith have belief in who? Jesus Christ. For verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you about grace, because a lot of people don't understand our grace. See, the judge is not let you go. Grace says, again, somebody has to die for the penalty you did. And Jesus Christ came to this earth and died. He didn't say just let him go. He died. He paid the penalty. So now, instead of them seeing you 
being unrighteous and blameless, you, you're, you're unrighteous and sinful. Now they see Christ blameless. And let's go ahead and continue. Verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith. Through what? Faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believe, there it is again, remember you see the word belief and faith is the same thing, that believeth in Jesus where is boasting then it excluded by what? The law. By what? Law or works. Nay, but by the law of faith. 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 Only way you're going to become righteousness is through the faith of Jesus Christ. That's why we call it righteousness by faith. It has to be a continual, continual thing every single day. We're going to look at that in a second. Let's go to Galatians 5.5 5 real quick. I'm going to start to wind down. Galatians 5.5. 5. Galatians 5.5. 5. Galatians 5.5. 5. And, and he says it right here. He says it right here. See, I want to start taking this, my stuff off. Boy, look at this. <laughs> All right, Galatians 5 5. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of what? There it is. Righteousness by what? Faith. Oh, Pope, I hope we get this. You're guilty. You've done the crime. You, should, you deserve punishment. But God has set up a system, but the only way you can get this righteousness is only, I don't care what you do, it's only through the faith of the blood of Christ. That's it. There is no other way. Because Romans 4, 3. I didn't even know I had so many texts. Wow. Romans 4, 3, so we can just see it. Here it says, for what shall, for, for what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was a crown of, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God and he actually did what God said. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned by grace but of debt. But to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for what? Righteousness. Even as David has described it, the, bl the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth, imputeth basically means accounted or counted for him, righteousness without works. So again, I don't care what we do, it's not what we do. God has given us righteousness again.